While our teacher yelled at Rex and then at his friends for laughing, I slowly backed away. I kept going until I couldn't hear the group anymore and found myself among a cluster of sharply sweet-smelling evergreens. The needles cushioned the ground beneath my feet and a blue jay twittered on a low branch. branch. I breathed in deep and held the sweet air in my lungs. If my parents let me out of their sight more, I probably wouldn't have felt the need to escape from the group, but that's not going to change until I turn 12. I have a whole list of things I'll finally get to do when that day arrives. As I stood alone in the woods, a delicious chill of anticipation ran through me, as it always did when I thought of my 12th birthday. I leaned back against a large gray rock, intending on gazing at the puffy clouds and daydreaming about the big day. The only problem, that large gray rock, not a rock. What I thought was solid, igneous rock, here on Earth since the creation of the planet, and therefore more than sturdy enough to support my weight, was in fact a rubber flap covering the opening of a narrow gray drain pipe. When I realized this, my arms and legs flailed wildly, but I couldn't catch my balance in time. I fell, butt first, into the pipe and was instantly wedged in. I could still see out if I craned my neck up. My sneakers dangled mere inches from the ground, but it might as well have been a mile since I couldn't move. Can anyone hear me? I called out as loudly as I could. I'm stuck, anyone? But my voice got carried away by the wind like it was no more than a whisper. My head filled with my grandmother's voice. Well, this is a fine kettle of fish. And that's where I'll stop. <laughs> but the book is about this girl who has a whole list of things she can do when she turns 12 that her parents have been promising her. And then it was sort of my job to make all of those things go really wrong for her. So things like stay home alone, or go to the mall with her friends, get a cell phone, and uh, she wound up losing her cell phone from the time, in between the time she bought it at the store of the mall to the time she got back out to the parking lot of the mall. She'd already lost it the first time. So I had a lot of fun trying to imagine things that, you know, you get to look forward to at that age, and, uh, what if, and then they always don't really wind up the way that you think they would. And the way that I, I wrote this book was I actually sent out questionnaires to kids who were 9, 10, 11, 12, and asked them what are some things that you're looking forward to doing or that your parents told you you could do. And then I compiled the answers that I received the most often, and, and that's what went into the book. So um, we have a few minutes for questions on anything you want to talk about. Yes? Um, do you write the books from beginning to end, or just um, the question was, do I write the books from beginning to end or just different parts at different times? I usually try to do it very much from beginning to end. Sometimes if I get stuck on a scene, I'll kind of leave it and summarize it and move ahead and then go back and fill it in. But, um, and that's a good way if you're writing in your writer's block, you know, write a scene that you're looking forward to writing or that's easier and then go back. Yes. Yes, um, my first book to be made into a movie is, is uh, coming out next year. It's called Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life, and hopefully it'll come out next summer. They just finished filming it um, in New York City a few weeks ago, so we'll see. <laughs> yes. Uh, the new book is called The Candy Makers, and it's about four kids who are all 12 years old, and they um, are competing to make the world's best new candy. So the, uh, most of the book takes place inside a candy factory, and it also you get to hear the story from each person's perspective. So you never really know what's going on until you get to that person's section. So this should be out sometime this week. Yes. How did she get out of the drain pipe? She's rescued by this mysterious old woman who doesn't look strong enough to, to get her out of the drain pipe. It winds up just like yanking her right out and that, that old woman uh, plays a big part in, in the book. And actually, if you read 11 Birthdays, you'd recognize the woman. Did you read 11 Birthdays? Yeah? Do you remember Angelina? Yeah, with like the duck birthmark on her face? That's her. So she shows up in all the books. Yes? Um, well, after, after finally about the girl turning 12, the book I'm writing now is about a girl turning 13 in the same town. So there'll be a, I think that'll, and then there'll be one more. So that's the closest thing to a series that I have, I guess. Yes? I heard you mention last year that you were going to do a sequel, like kind of, kind of sequel that pulls in characters from a different book. Are you still planning on that? Um, I'm still hoping to do that. I think that would be like four books from now. <laughs> 
And I do have this contract that says untitled book, and I'm hoping that that's the one. I think I'll wait until the Jeremy Fink movie comes out, and if it does well, then maybe people would want a sequel to it, and then I would do that. Yeah. Yes. The Candy Makers is my tenth book. So, and then I have contracts for five more, and then I hope to sleep for a really long time <laughs> and not write any more books for a while because I think I've said all I need to say in my books. I worry about that, you know, making each one different enough from the last one. And, it's a challenge. Although Mr. Tony Abbott over there has written, what, 80 books now? 90 books. I don't know how he does it. Anything else? Yes? What age did you decide to I wrote my first short story, I think, in fifth grade with my sisters. And ever since then, I've just loved writing. And I don't think I really realized that it could be your career until I got to college and maybe a little bit after college. And I worked in publishing. So I kind of got to see what making books was like on the other side of the desk and realized that I really wanted to be the one writing them, not the one editing them. So that's when I started really focusing on it. There. Yes? Um, my favorite thing I've written is usually the last book because it's done and I don't have to look at it again. <laughs> So I would say The Candy Makers right now, and the favorite thing I've read, I, I love books, and so, you know, it's so hard to pick your favorite book. Growing up, I was a big Judy Bloom fan, and I'm still a big Judy Bloom fan, so I'll read anything new that she writes. Anything on this side? Okay, I don't want to go over my time. Does anyone know what time it is? Oh, okay, we still have a few minutes, and then I'll go over there and sign books after. Yes? Um, I have to finish writing it, and then it'll come out next fall. So about a year from now. I don't know what it's called. I really don't. Right now, you know how each book, Eleven Birthdays had balloons on the cover, and then finally has a cake? So my editor thought it would be fun to have a big present, like a big wrapped gift on the cover. And so I was thinking of calling it Gifted, but my main character really isn't very gifted. <laughs> so either I have to change the story to match the book cover, or come up with a different book cover. It's challenging. <laughs> yes? Did you have success when you first started writing or did you have rejection from your books? I had, um, when I go to schools, I do a lot of school visits and talk to kids about writing and I bring with me this laminated rejection roll. I laminated all my rejection letters into one big roll that looks like a big um, paper towel roll and it goes the length of the auditorium. So there's 50 rejection letters for mostly, mostly, well, the first maybe third was trying to get an agent, and then the next third was probably for a novel that never got published, that's back in the drawer, and then the last third was for Mango Shape Space, and then that's the first one that got published. So it takes a while to, even once it gets published, it takes a while to really build up, you know, an audience and people waiting for your next book, and it's, I don't know. It's a crazy career, it's a lot of fun, but it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure sometimes too.